G'day guys, welcome to my new channel where I discuss everything Essendon and where better to start than the trade period. The Bombers have been unusually quiet compared to recent seasons which is mainly due to the fact we have been without a CEO, a coach and a proper plan. The real question on fans lips is whether we will pick up anyone before the draft and I'm going to have a little look at the players we are said to be linked to and some that I think would be appropriate fits for the club. Now most of these are not going to happen, they're just rumours, in fact I don't really see us doing anything but we can dream. Brisbane's barometer is said to be looking to join another club for better opportunities. He's a consistent pressure-based player who genuinely gives his all week in, week out. He may not fit the age, demographic, or list requirements, but it's hard to argue that he wouldn't be a terrific depth pickup wherever he goes. Matheson is approaching the prime age for AFL athletes as well, so we would be getting him right at his peak. The only issue is his trade value and deciding on a pick for us to send over, which with Dodoro is never a simple ask. We will be hoping to match a bid for Alan Davy Jr. and possibly even Anthony Mankara if he slides out of the top 20 and with just four draft picks outside of the first round the Bombers will need to do some wheeling and dealing elsewhere. This one seems a bit too complicated to get done unless Brisbane are willing to accept a fourth round pick at least. One that could be much more straightforward if he decides to join the club would be the arrival of Anthony McDonald Tip and Woody. The fan favourite goal sneak retired midway through 2022 but apparently is second guessing his decision and his manager confirmed this on trade radio saying both the Bombers and Dockers have spoken with him. Matthew Lloyd said that Waller was actually more likely to join the Dockers, although getting there is a really tough ask because he would have to be overlooked in the rookie draft before being picked as an SSP rookie. To get to SNN would be much more simple, that's if he wants to come back here. It is also a question of whether the club want him back. He is approaching 30 and has a monumental preseason awaiting him after his time out of the game. At his best, it's undeniable how incredible he is, but the question is whether his body can maintain the ferocity of AFL level as he approaches the end of his career. Cal Toomey said in passing on Trade Radio the other day that Will Setterfield was being looked at by the Essendon Bombers. Setterfield's had a less than desirable career at the Blues, having played just 57 games from his six seasons at AFL level. The struggling mid is out of contract, but a deal would need to be struck, a deal that is sure to involve a third or even second round pick as a main component. Setterfield was taken at pick five in 2016, which will complicate negotiations and result in Colton driving a harder than desired bargain. And if that is the case, it may not even be worth pursuing the talented mid. Setterfield hasn't proven enough to be worth more than a third round pick at this stage in his career if we are being honest I don't see this one happening. Liam Stocker on the other hand is a player who is worth next to nothing. He was delisted by the Blues which means he won't cost anything in the way of draft picks and he'll be on a very small salary compared to what he earned at the Blues. Stocker is also just a handy pickup for any club. He is still only 22, still has time to develop but did enough from his 25 games to show he is worthy of an AFL list spot. Will Stocker fix clubs holes? Probably not but he is a cheap handy pickup that has a small chance of developing into a fine player, it's a risk worth taking in my opinion. Keeping on the theme with Colton, we have Paddy Dow who is also apparently requesting a trade out of the side. Colton's list boss said the club was willing to facilitate a trade, but Dow, who was taken with pick 3 in the 2017 draft, would be a more expensive option than Setterfield or Stocker. Dow has played 59 games in his short career and has shown plenty, but just cannot crack it in Colton's senior team. He has the ability to be a classy ball winning midfielder, but has failed to put on significant size to help him reach his potential. Dow's Seems a bit far-fetched for us, but if he came cheap, I would not be upset with him in the red and black. Another one that seems pretty far-fetched is the Wantaway Tiger, Jack Graham. Graham made headlines when he went for a medical with Port Adelaide only to reject their trade offer, but apparently the Tiger is still available at the right price. Graham would be a great pickup for the club. He's a big-bodied inside mid, capable of playing up forward and hitting the scoreboard. The only issue is he would be costly. There is no doubt Richmond's asking price for Graham would be a second or third round pick. There would have to be significant dealing done to land Graham and Richmond don't seem too keen on parting ways with him anyway, so the odds of this one happening are very slim. It was reported midway through September that we were interested in out of favour Hawks wingman Tom Phillips. The club is seeking more running power on the wings, and Phillips, who was being underutilised at the Hawks, seemed a clear option. He was delisted, but probably still has a bit of good footy left in him. I would honestly love a year or two of Phillips on our list, while Durham and Cox grow as players. I think he could provide solid depth in a position we aren't strong in. That's if he could replicate his Collingwood form. Another delisted player is Long speech to Quinton Narkle. Narkle has the ability to play in a range of different positions, but if we wanted him, it would most likely be as a forward, a spot he really didn't play much at the Cattery. He is a risky option and probably a bit far-fetched considering we have developing smalls at the club already and are eyeing off Alan Davy Jr. in the draft. The last of the D-listed pickups could be Jez McLennan. McLennan really didn't get much of a chance at Gold Coast before being delisted after his four seasons at the club. I saw a few fans raise his name, so I feel inclined to put him here, but the 22-year-old is yet to feature 
at senior level and probably won't get a chance anywhere. I expect him to remain without a club and end his career without a single appearance. Miles Bergman was reportedly being shown interest by a host of Victorian clubs trying to lure the first round draftee from 2019 home. Bergman is contracted till next season which makes it very difficult for a trade deal to get done but Port are after draft picks so may be willing to facilitate a fair trade. It's hard to know what is considered a fair trade for the first round draftee that hasn't exactly set the world alight. He has played 33 games in the last two years and was a vital member of the preliminary final squad in 2021. This feels like another one that seems a bit too tricky to get done especially with Dodoro on the case. It was reported late into September that we were keeping a close eye on Saints tough man Jack Bytel. Bytel was forced out of the Saints team after an impressive 2021 which saw him play 13 games but this year he managed none. Although he is young he could come at a cheap price. He was a third round draft pick who is not a required member of the team. If we go for him I suspect it would be at the very highest a fourth rounder that gets the job done. And finally we have another GWS want away in Xavier O'Halloran. O'Halloran was born in Essendon but drafted to the Giants where he has been for the last few seasons. He is currently 22 and after a heated exchange with an assistant coach fits right in with the exodus. He is promising, has played a decent amount of senior footy and is versatile. He can play in a number of different roles thanks to his athletic nature but will most likely be used in the forward line if we decide to pick him up. He is out of contract at the Giants but not a free agent which means a trade will need to be agreed upon. So those are the players that have been linked to the Dons and the players I think could fit in at the club. Let me know down below what you think will happen with our trade period and let me know what other videos you want to see from me.